Hey everybody. It's now Friday afternoon and we're going to take a trip back down the street and check on my minnow trap that I set out yesterday afternoon. It was a beautiful day yesterday afternoon and I had no idea it was supposed to be such a crappy miserable rainy day today but it has been and the stream has been really elevated. I wouldn't quite call it flooding but it's been really elevated and muddy and the sun finally came out about an hour ago and everything's starting to dry out a little bit. I imagine the stream is probably still uh, pretty high and pretty muddy. So we're going to go down anyway and check on the minnow trap and see if we can't uh, recover it. I don't know if it's going to be in the same position or if it's going to have been uh, washed downstream a little ways. But either way, we're going to head on down to the stream and we're going to check it out. So sit tight and I'll see you in a minute. All right, here we are. I'm really surprised the water is all cleared up. We had gone out a little earlier this evening and when we drove by the stream up at the other end of the street it was all cloudy and muddy. I was not expecting to get down here and see it this clear. It is a little high, but not much. And yesterday when I came through here, there was a couple of fairly large fish that darted up and hit up here. I'd like to see them again, because I'd like to find out what they are. Too much to even see in there. It's always the worst part of the walk. It's through all that silty, mucky stuff. And it always goes up over my ankles and gets down in my boots. All right, I was afraid the trap would have been moved. see what we got in it if anything there's a couple of little fish in it for the time being let's see what we got a lot of muck we definitely have one of those little sculpins and it looks like these other fish are the little natropus species yep that's one I'm pretty sure they're all the same yeah, it's these little Natropus species. Now, a lot of people say that these are black-nosed dace, and I always thought the same thing, but I do not believe they are. I believe they're some sort of uh, one of the Natropus species, and I'll spell that if I remember, and uh, put that down in the info below if you want to look it up, because there's several different species that look really, really similar, and that's why I always simply say Natropus species and leave it at that. I don't want to try to single out which one I think it might be. So let's try to pour some of this water out.
but yeah that's definitely all three the same species so we still didn't catch any of the uh rosy side dace which is what i actually wanted to catch We've still got bait in there, so we can set it back up and try again. Ugh, this water's so cold. All right. Now, provided we don't have any more rainstorms tonight, which we're not supposed to, now we should be able to come back tomorrow and check that again. So in the meantime, we're going to take these little guys back to the house. through there has changed just in the last two days from this storm that came through Got another inch and I'm gonna be getting my feet wet I love the way that sounds. And I guess since we're here today, we can try again as far as seeing if any uh, crayfish are out on the other side. Keep forgetting they put a new guardrail in. It's too high for me to step over anymore, so I have to come in at the far end and then walk up. I used to be able to just step over the guardrail up here. I can usually find some crayfish in and around here, but the water's a little mucky today. I'm surprised it's as clear as it is, but it's still a little mucky for hunting for crayfish. And it is a little bit higher than normal. Not a lot, but it is still a little bit higher and faster moving. All this sandbank is gone. I used to be able to just walk right across here and get to the bottom. So that's changed. This is my first time down here this spring so far. So this is completely different. I can't really walk through here anymore. And uh, the middle looks a lot more washed out and deeper. So all these pieces of log here 
This got wedged up against the other side. It came down in a flood over the winter and was wedged up against the tunnel. So they must have just chainsawed it up into small enough pieces that they'd come through the tunnel and they left it at that. They called it good. So we've got these big chunks of trees sitting here and these big logs. There's another one out there. There's actually several more further down. So normally I would say on a day like today where I'm talking about the water being elevated and it was raining earlier. Uh, this is a, not a time that you should ever be in or around a little stream like this on rainy, thundery days or when the water's, you know, already elevated. In this case, I know that this stream starts from a little spring about three miles upstream from here and just springs add to it as it flows downstream and it's this big by the time it gets here. Um, we probably have a dozen or more springs right on our street here that add to it. So this isn't coming from any long distance away, you know, so if there was some storm somewhere off in the distance that I didn't know about, it wouldn't be affecting this stream or anything. We're not in any danger of flash floods or anything like that. Um, but otherwise, like I said, if it's a day like today where it's been raining and the water is a little elevated and murky and stuff like that, it's just never a good idea to be in or around a stream like that. Unless, of course, you've got all the background details like me. So I'm going to go ahead call this piece good and I will see you back at the tank all right everybody here we are now I probably should be using a different camera but just for the ease of shooting this video I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with this camera we've been using so no biggie I just put them into this little pitcher and then we're gonna pour them in through the top And they're all going to dash and dart and scatter away. Now a couple of creek chubs did take shots at them like it was food. And we've got this little sculpin hiding here. And then we've got this little Neutropus right there. Looks like he's in shock. And he probably is if you felt how cold that water was and if you knew how warm this tank was these fish probably just went through about a i don't know i'd say at least a 15 degree if not a 20 degree temperature difference probably just went from 50 degrees to 70 degrees so they'll adjust to it easy enough i've done it many times without any issue i've done water changes where i've you know, done a 80% water change and then just refilled the tank with cold groundwater and the fish don't seem to be bothered by it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that video up. We will go back tomorrow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the one clawed crayfish. He's cleaning house. He's in there removing some gravel, digging out his little den or possibly her little den. I'm definitely getting more used to the lights in here the way they are when you notice the other um, the way the plants move around actually gives a little bit of dapple sunlight effect and we just got a little bit of feel of that when the plants were swirling around as we were looking at this crayfish down here so the tanks starting to get a little more interesting again now that we're moving into the warmer weather so I'm going to say make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss anything I got coming up. We got all kind of good stuff happening. And don't forget tomorrow we will be going down and uh, checking that out again. You know, going and trying to get some more of these little rosy side dace. And this is the rosy side dace that we're looking for. This little red sided fish here. And they are absolutely beautiful. So hopefully we'll be able to pick up a few more of them uh, in the coming days here. So again, thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget this one is my native tank. I'll see you real soon in the next one.